it's time for a Pokemon video, so let's just get right into it. This video is for you if you want to have some fun with Pokemon lore and you're one of the people that tries to make sense of Pokemon. Every generation, we get new Pokemon and with every new Pokemon, there's going to be a bunch of people out there on the internet that are going to theorize and are going to come up with these crazy theories. These theories have been a part of every generation. I'm taking it back to Gen 1. Sometimes I like going out on the internet and sometimes I'll stumble upon something. That's really cool. This is a theory that I've known about for a very long time. The crazy theory that Cubone is actually a Kangaskhan baby. And you know, this is just interesting. Gen 1 you know, it presents a very unique kind of dynamic when it comes to the lore of Pokemon because Gen 1 was when they weren't sure if Pokemon was going to be a thing and a lot of the things that got established in the future, they had no way to plan for. So there's a lot of outdated concepts that can be found in Gen 1 if you know where to look. But guys, this is the one for today. The idea that Kangaskhan and Cubone are related by something more. Quick disclaimer, there's a variation of this theory that says that it's actually Cubone and Charizard who are related. But whatever man, like that's whatever. I'm not going for that one. Like, we're doing Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan's cooler. It's a, it's a kangaroo. Kangaroos are freaking deadly. Anyway, the basics of this theory. Here's what's going on. Cubone is a Kangaskhan baby. The Kangaskhan mother dies protecting it. Then Cubone takes the skull. It takes probably a femur. Most likely a femur. It looks like a femur. Eh, kinda. And it goes on on, it, on its own. It becomes the lonely Pokemon. There we go. That's the theory right there. Cubone, Kangaskhan. Now, the interesting things here are why is this the connection and why do they not evolve? Why does a Cubone not evolve into a Kangaskhan? Okay, first off. Let's talk about why it doesn't evolve into a Kangaskhan. Well, like, think about it. I, I really think about it. Look at how many Pokemon evolve when they are holding an item. They evolve into something different than they usually would. So think about Cubo. Cubo is wearing a skull. It, it, ca it carries a kangaroo femur. That's part of its design. That's probably holding up an item. So evolution in Pokemon is really weird. So with a Cubo, you get this thing where after it takes its mother's skull as it's growing up, it somehow does a weird fusion with this skull and it evolves into a Marowak, a Pokemon that has grown up without its mother. And, you know, that's pretty neat. Here, I'm going to bombard you with some pictures of why a Kangaskhan baby and a Cubone kind of look the same. This is, what you know, probably the most credible thing you'll see when it comes to this theory. Probably the, yeah, fan art. Fan arts, yeah, I, I believe it. And you, you know, I know you guys will say, hey, they don't look the same. It's like, yeah, okay, but we're talking about fictional monsters, okay? Just, just, just suspend your disbelief for a bit, please. Please. Who knows what happens to Pokemon bones, like, after they die? I'm not a Pokemon bone doctor. I doubt that would be a worthwhile profession. But, uh, you know, you can never really count it out. I mean, these are monsters whose shedded shell turns into a Pokemon itself. I think, like, I think it's okay to suspend your disbelief a little bit on, like, a slight difference in the skull. Anyway, now we gotta ask, why did people even bother to make this connection? Well, back in Gen 1, I'm gonna go in with my interpretation of this. There were two sets of Pokemon that had a theme of mother and child in their lore. And that was Cubone, Marowak, and then Kangaskhan. Cubone, of course, represented the loss of a mother. Kangaskhan represented a mother protecting her child. So, you know, they have a similar theme, and if it helps you out. Cubone was initially called Orphan. It was based on an orphan, it, because that's what it pretty much was. So, when it comes to a Cubone, the theme just happened to mesh at the right time, and then if you took it steps further, you'd say, like, well, Kangaskhan was a Pokemon that was always being hunted. That's why it's in the Safari Zone. It's an exotic Pokemon. And, you know, that's that's pretty cool, too. Overall, you know, this is just a really neat little theory. Of course, nowadays, we have no way of proving it. Man, and let's, not, let's just face it. The whole thing with Cubone in the current generation games is freaking weird, man. How can I have a Marowak giving me an egg with a Cubone? And the Cubone's wearing the Marowak's skull, apparently, but I still have my Marowak. You know, that, that doesn't make sense. And the whole egg system doesn't make sense when you apply it to certain Pokemon. But that aside, that's, this isn't what the video is about. Anyway, it's a cool little theory. The theory that Cubone is a Kangaskhan child who was orphaned. Honestly, I think it might have been right in Gen 1. I think that might have been the connection. 
that Game Freak tried to go with. And guys, the reason I picked out Kangaskhan and decided not to focus on the Charizard theory is because there's a really little weird thing that happens with Kangaskhan's and Cubones. You see, if you look at the location data for a Cubone and a Kangaskhan, sometimes it's kind of weird. See, in Generation 2 in the Rock Tunnel, you can find a Cubone, you can find a freaking Kangaskhan. Where, how did the Kangaskhan get to that tunnel? Did it somehow get out of the Safari Zone? Like, did it just get tired of people throwing rocks at it all the time? I don't know, man. But, Generation 2, Cubone and Kangaskhan. In Generation 6, we get it again in X and Y's Glittering Cave. And the one that really pushes it over the edge, we got it again in Sun and Moon. Both Cubone and Kangaskhan can be found in the Well of Volcano Park. And man, Let's face it, like that's weird. What the heck is a kangaroo doing near volcano? There's that doesn't seem right, man. The sulfur. How how is it dealing with that? The only other Pokemon in that area are part fire type or a Cubone who's about to evolve into a fire type. What? But when you apply the Cubone connection to that logic, of course it all suddenly clicks and it all suddenly makes sense. The kangaroos are dropping like flies because they can't handle a volcano, and for every kangaroo that drops, a little kangaroo joey gets orphaned, it scavenges the mother's skull, and there you go, Cubone. That's why there's so many Cubones in the same area there's a Kangaskhan in the volcano. Crazy theories, peeps. Now I'm not saying this is proof, but I do think this is a correlation. I think there might be a connection that's lost in the annals of Game Freak's history. And now they just don't bother. They don't want to fulfill it. They don't want to make that connection. And look, there's a lot of connections in Pokemon that haven't been fulfilled. The throw and the sock thing? Where, where's the little pre-evolution for that, huh? But no, we're not getting that. Anyway, I'm digressing. That's the big point. Uh, in every game where Kangaskhan and Cubone have appeared where they can be naturally caught, they appear together, except for in Generation 1. Generation 2 where they appear, Generation 6, Generation 7. You can find them together. And again, Generation 7 in a volcano, like, that doesn't make sense. And I know, trying to apply sense to Pokemon, I've already lost the battle. But you know what? No shame. Anyway, enough talk, let's go with my verdict. What I overall think about this theory, I think in the current canon of the games, this connection doesn't exist, but I do believe that this was some kind of plan that Game Freak had in the back of their heads back in Generation 1. I do think this is a connection that Game Freak had, and every time that they put these two Pokemon together near dangerous volcanoes, I believe it's because they are paying respect to that idea that they had when they first started Pokemon. This gets a trip rating of out there. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video. And now this is the afterword of the video. Um, I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video. There's a ton of weird and crazy Pokemon theories that have happened all throughout the generations of Pokemon. And I honestly think they're pretty fun to talk about. So guys, if you know any weird Pokemon theories, leave it down below. And let me know what you think of this theory. The general theory of a Cubone being Kangaskhan. Or a Cubone and a Kangaskhan being related in a way that we just can't access in the games. Do you think it's possible? Do you think it's something that might have been planned initially? Let me know down below. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.